And good morning, everyone. Welcome to this day. It is a Wednesday, and we're going to have a slight bit of a warm-up. I'll tell you about the weather coming up in just a moment. On our show today, we have a doctor on, and he is an endocrinologist uh, with Ho. We're going to talk about that. He's going to sit down with Lisa, and they're going to talk about uh, diabetes care at their uh, Mary and Dick Allen Diabetes Center. Also, hey, the Senior Center today is coming by, and uh, Shirley will be here today, and someone you may remember. He comes on every uh, once in a while. In fact, he uh, used to be on our show quite a bit, and that is Ted Bryant with Nest Egg Investments. He is going to be uh, helping out with the casino night coming up this weekend. Also, security update, Tim Moy will be here, and then we're going to bring on a Thrive segment, and today it's going to be Mark Rubinovich, and you know him. He does our wonderful trading post on Wednesdays, and he also is quite often around the village taking wonderful photos, and he's going to come on and talk about that. Now, meetings, there are a couple meetings today, and uh, they are, if you would like to attend them, uh, the first one, uh, actually, wow, there's only one meeting today. I thought there was two. There is only one. I have, uh, and that's the United Special Board meeting. Now, what this is, uh, it's at 9:30 today in the boardroom, and this is doing uh, taking care of some unfinished business simply because of the time frame between each normal board meeting. They'd have to wait two months instead of uh, just the normal one because there's 28 days in between the meetings. So that's why they're having this special meeting today to go over some unfinished business. So if you'd like to go to this. Well, it's right after our program today if you're watching us in the morning at 9.30. Now let's get to the weather. Slight warm up, this high pressure system is beginning to move in. And it's not a big high. In fact, it's only going to last a couple days. And the center of it is more off our coast. So when that happens, it does spin some, um, some wind into our area, but not as strong as when those highs are up around the Nevada and those areas. When they're sitting over Utah, Nevada, and that, that really, that's when we get the really strong, hot, dry Santa Ana winds. This one will bring some winds down from the north a bit. Um, not too much here. We're going to warm up a bit today to about 83. 87 tomorrow, that's going to be it. That's the warm day. And then look how we drop down over the weekend and into next week, Monday and Tuesday. At this point, I'll give you a little heads up, at this point, we're looking at a maybe a 20% chance of rain as we get into maybe Monday and Tuesday and a drop in temperature to possibly the mid to low 70s. So we'll see if that happens, but a couple days here we will warm up a bit, maybe a tiny bit of uh, offshore uh, breezes coming down really from the north, that's gonna be about it. Here we go around the area today, and uh, you can see it's only maybe about two degrees warmer than what we had yesterday. The beaches are gonna be right around 76 again that's an average I, I look at the beaches up and down the coast of orange county and this is kind of what uh probably laguna beach is going to be today uh around 76 and uh give, give or take a little bit sunset is about 6:45 tonight so if you're heading down to uh the coast and want to see that sunset get down there oh at least by about um, 6 30 maybe get down there early have a, nice, uh, have a nice dinner and then enjoy the sunset. You might want to bring a light jacket down there because it's uh, getting a little bit cool down there. All right, we'll be back in just a moment. Pick a town. Arrive hungry. Real hungry. Start with a massive burger. Charred. Juicy. Add bacon. A buttery bun. Pile high. Serve it up. Wash it down. Creamy. Hoppy. Fruity. Malty. We're not done yet. Q time. Deep fried. Sauce soap. Pork ribs. Meaty. Tender. I'm full. Where to next? All new. Burgers Brew and Q. Tuesday at 9. Cooking channel. Stay fired up. Hi, I'm Sharon. I am so pleased to welcome you to JTV. We're a 24-7 home shopping network focused exclusively on jewelry and gemstones. And because we believe every woman deserves to be lifted up, 
We love to help her sparkle, keep her informed, and make her smile. Our viewer is passionate about jewelry and gemstones, and we share her passion. Because of that, she keeps coming back, making us one of the top retailers in the United States. We sell extraordinary products at extraordinary prices. Welcome to JTV. Hey, Laguna Woods, it's Ken. And Lisa. Did you miss an episode of this day? Not to worry, head over to youtube.com and search Village Television. Here you can find each episode of This Day and other community programs such as Good Day OC, Discovering Laguna Woods, and much more. Just click the red subscribe button, then click the bell to be emailed every time we upload a video. Don't miss out. And subscribe today. I'm coming for you, Cancer. With California Protons, I now have the technology and expertise to fight with unmatched precision. I'll zero in and wear you down with radiation, millimeter by millimeter. You won't weaken me. I'll spare my tissues and protect myself against future threats. Cancer, your history. I'm looking to the future. When I was first diagnosed, they gave me about two years to live. After they took it out, they did some additional tests and it found out that yes, it was a cancerous tumor. I had an aorta dissection and that triggered a stroke on top of it. I've been in treatment a little over two years. They saved my life. If I hadn't been pregnant, they would not have found that mess. If it hadn't been for Ben, I might not be here. It was amazing that he has knowledge to do what he has to do to save me. Welcome back. Today I have Dr. On, who's here on behalf of Hogue, but he's going to be talking to us about the Mary and Dick Allen Diabetes Center. Welcome. Thanks for having me. You're welcome and thank you for being here. Now we have your title as endocrinologist and program director. That's so right. as we were talking before the segment, uh, we were talking about what an endocrinologist is and I found it very interesting that you, you had a really interesting answer. So <laughs> go ahead and tell me your answer. Yeah. So. Um, you know, you might have come into endocrinology from to cover various different pathologies or disease states. Right. Um, it really seems like a grab bag if I listed out what endocrinologists manage because it's technically the study of hormones. Okay. And hormones are um, uh, uh, in involved in many different organ systems. So the list of things includes bone health, like okay. osteoporosis, diabetes, which insulin is the hormone that manages diabetes, thyroid hormone. Um, so there's a ton of different disease right. states that we manage as endocrinologists. Right, and I, and I, I certainly didn't know that because as I had mentioned, it was more of a bone issue yeah. that, that we had come into an endocrinologist. So um, diabetes, we're gonna talk today about the center. Tell me a little about some of the services that the Diabetes Center has. Yeah, so the Marion Dick Allen Diabetes Center is primarily an education resource for the community okay. and physicians in the community. Um, historically, that's kind of the basis of it. There are dietitians, there are diabetes educators, there are RNs um, that are all specialized in talking about diabetes with mm -hmm. patients. Mm -hmm. So um, we offer a lot of group classes as well. So okay. uh, the topics that we cover are um, diabetes self-management. So if someone is newly diagnosed or wants to kind of get a fundamental knowledge base of how to manage their diabetes, we have group classes for that. We also have something called the Diabetes Prevention Program for Healthy Lifestyles. Okay. So that's if someone is obese or has some risk factors for developing diabetes, they can mm -hmm. kind of go to that class to learn how to prevent the pro progression to having diabetes. Okay. Um, and also we have some community events there, like um, we have something called uh, Sweet Success, um, and that there's a cooking class that takes place every month that's open to the community. Okay. Uh, in addition, we also have an endocrinologist, myself, that's on staff, 
and we also have um, a nurse practitioner who sees patients as well. Now, are you involved in some of the educational process? Are you giving some of the talks? Yeah, definitely. So okay. I kind of oversee the curriculum, um, and also I participate in kind of teaching certain topics within the different series. Okay. Um, we kind of pull whichever content expert we have. You know, for, so for example, if there's a class on eating habits, we'll pull our dietitians. If there's a class on you know, exercise, we might pull our CVE. If there's mm -hmm. a class on medications, we might pull myself or a pharmacist to come talk and talk to the audience. Okay, so let's talk about the medications. So for instance, mm -hmm. you mentioned insulin. Mm -hmm. Is that the only medication that's used for diabetes? No, um, well, I guess I should kind of take an aside here. So there's type one and type two diabetes. Okay. So for type mm -hmm. one diabetes, um, patients, uh, people don't make insulin. So in that t situation, they do need to be on insulin. Okay. So for type one diabetes, insulin really is the only option okay. or the primary option, I should say. Um, whereas with type 2 diabetes, which is what 90% of diabetes is, so the bulk of your audience has type 2 diabetes, insulin is not the only option. It could be one of the options, but it doesn't usually have to be the first, second, or third line option. Okay. And that's where things get really interesting, and there's been a lot of advancements in medications recently. So give me an example. Yeah, so there are a lot of, you probably see all these ads on TV all the time for things like Victoza and Trulicity and um, uh, Jardiance and Invokana, mm -hmm. and there basically have been two real significant classes of medications that have come out in the past 10 years. Okay. And they really approach and help man people manage diabetes in ways that um, offer benefits that insulin does not. So for example, insulin, um, one of its dirty secrets is that it can contribute to weight gain, which okay. nobody really enjoys. Mm -hmm. But uh, the two classes of medications that I talk about, uh, or that I talked about previously, um, both help with weight loss. Okay. Um, and in addition, um, those two uh, classes of medications also help reduce cardiovascular events, okay. such as heart attacks and strokes. Um, so these are, you know, side benefits that people with uh, diabetes and our older patients uh, really do well on. Okay. Um, and I think a lot of times people aren't aware that there are these options available on the market. So obviously you take a look at the, the, the makeup of the individual, mm -hmm. how much they weigh or what some of their issues are, and then you prescribe according to that, correct? Definitely. And okay. I can't really emphasize that enough, um, that therapy should be individualized. Okay. So for certain people, um, one class of medications is better. So one of the classes that I just talked about, uh, which includes Victoza and Trulicity, those are injectable medications. Okay. So as you might imagine, some people aren't thrilled about taking an injection, mm -hmm. um, but some people really want that weight loss benefit. So okay. when someone sees an endocrinologist like myself, a lot of that is really teasing out what the patient's priorities are, um, whether they're okay with taking an injectable, what their beliefs are about insulin. So there's so many different options. I kind of liken it to a tool belt. You know, okay. we have like a toolkit ahead in front of us, and based on the patient's preferences and prior experiences, we want to pick the best tool for them because it's not a one-size-fits-all situation. Right, right. And, and let me ask you, if you are diagnosed with diabetes, is there a turnaround? Like, could you actually not have it at some point? I'm glad you asked that. It's a very um, tricky question. So a lot of times I'll be asked, you know, can it be cured? Can it be reversed? Mm -hmm. And in the end, I think it really comes down to terminology. Okay. So you can definitely get to the point where you're no longer on medications, where your blood sugar control is back to where it would be if you did not have diabetes. Okay. But in that situation, I still don't like to necessarily say it's cured because you still have to eat a certain way, you still right. have to make certain lifestyle choices. So it's not like you can go back and you know, eat and live the way that you did 20 years ago when you were you know, not eating healthily. You mm -hmm. still have to make good choices, but you definitely can get to a point where you're not on medications and your blood sugar control is fantastic. Oh, so cute. whether or not you want to call that reversed or cured, uh, it's a little bit of semantics. I kind of liken it to my patients to alcoholism. You know, some people say, you know, I've been sober for 30 years, but I'm still an alcoholic. It's mm -hmm. kind of the same way with diabetes. You can okay. be totally controlled right. off medications, but right. you still have that pre predisposition. And those education classes will help somebody realize that, right? Definitely. Perfect. <laughs> okay, good. All right. So how is our technology um, currently, or what we see down the line, helping people with diabetes? Yeah, so there's a lot of really exciting, you know, once similar to kind of the medications, there's been a lot of advancements in technology. Mm -hmm. So you're probably familiar with, you and your audience are probably familiar with people that have to check their blood sugars. Yes. It's kind of a pain point, literally, because they have to prick their finger, and it's not right. fun, and it's not the most hygienic or pleasant to your guests if you have friends over. 
Um, but there's a new uh, type of technology called continuous glucose monitoring, mm -hmm. and it's starting to become a lot more widespread. Uh, you might have seen page, uh, people walking around the neighborhood with like a little gray disc that kind of sits on their upper arm or abdomen. And what happens is it's a little sensor that you wear. Uh, you wear it for about 10 days, and it basically automatically samples your blood sugar every five to 15 minutes, depending on which brand you use. Oh. And to check your blood sugar, you don't have to prick your fingers anymore. You have, there are two main products. One is called the Dexcom G6, okay. and the other one is called the Abbott Freestyle Libre. Okay. The Freestyle Libre, which is gonna be more accessible to your patient population because it's a little bit more affordable, so insurance okay. is like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But what happens is you can basically grab a special device and you wave it over that sticker that you're wearing and it'll automatically tell you your blood sugar, okay. the direction that it's going, and it'll give you a graph of your last eight hours wow. without having to prick your fingers. So you just do that once a day? Um, we, it has an eight hour like looping memory, okay. kind of like a, if, imagine if it was like a surveillance camera. Mm -hmm. So you do have to scan it if you don't want to have any gaps at least every eight hours. Okay. But the nice thing is you can actually scan it through your clothes. So if you're wow. at, you know, if you're on, you're eating at a restaurant, mm -hmm. you don't have to bust out your device and, mm -hmm. you know, expose your friends to your blood. Right. You can just kind of swipe like this and yeah. look at the meter and it'll tell you what your blood is. Is the meter is. big or is it small? It's about the size of a standard glucose meter. Oh, so okay. maybe, you know, kind of like those um, stopwatches that you'll see refs use. Oh, okay. It's about that size, like fits in the palm of your hand, but it's not so small that other people won't see right. it. But it still could fit in the pocket or in a purse or something. Definitely. Like that. Okay. Oh, that's really a great. That's great. Now you don't have to prick yourself. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Excellent. And then, what are some ways that seniors could save money on their prescriptions or some other supplies? I know we just mentioned that insurance yes. uh, companies like it when things cost less money, but yes. that always isn't the case. Yeah, and it's really challenging for my patients that are seniors because most of them are on Medicare or on some mm -hmm. sort of government insurance. And unfortunately, the way that pharmaceutical companies are saving money and maybe gaming the system is using coupons. But unfortunately, coupons are not eligible for patients that are receiving Medicare. Okay. So that's a really big limitation for most of my patients. So my number one tip would really be, it's kind of obvious, but really tell your provider that your medications are costing a lot of money. Mm. Because uh, for the providers, we actually don't really know because some of our patients, their insurance, their Medicare will cover it and they have, you know, a $10 copay. Right. Whereas some of my patients will be stuck in the donut hole or with a different type of insurance where they're paying $500 for that same yeah. medication. Right. And really, $500 a month is not in anybody's budget or 99.9% no. .9 of the people. Right. It's not in my budget. Right. So when my patient tells me that they're paying, you know, three, four hundred, five hundred dollars $500 a month for a medication, we'll have to try to play with that and either find another tool mm -hmm. that might be more affordable mm -hmm. or try to fit, you know, find a different generic competitor. Okay. Um, or just, yeah, just change up the, the toolbox. Okay. Because there are options that are definitely cheaper out of pocket. Okay. Um, and there are options that are more expensive. So while okay. coupons are not available, there are definitely um, other options that might be more affordable that still have some benefits. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, I would say a lot of doctors have samples as well. Okay. And while, you know, it's not meant to, you know, literally it's meant to be a sample, right. it, it's at least a great way for you to try different medications without having to invoke your insurance every time and have to do the paperwork mm -hmm. and the prior authorizations. Mm -hmm. So I would really say to work with your provider okay. because a lot of times your provider just does not realize that you're paying this much well, money. Yeah, and they're seeing so many patients a day they don't necessarily know. So that is a really good tip to be able to talk to your physician. Yeah. Perfect. All right, well, thank you so much for the yeah, information. Thank you for I appreciate it. Very nice to meet you. Yeah, nice meeting you. All right, thank you. And uh, stay tuned, we'll be right back after this with the Senior Center. Would you like to save money like we do? I want to introduce you to our granddaughter, Erin Reed, who's a Medicare advisor. Erin, can you save my neighbors and friends money as you have done with Grandpa and me? Many of the plans I offer have $0 monthly premiums and can help save you money. There are many different options out there when it comes to Medicare coverage, and I represent all of them. But more importantly, I represent you as the individual. Call today for a free plan comparison.
Family Chronology is a family-owned business here to help you tell your story in your own unique way. In order to ensure that your legacy is passed down to your descendants for centuries to come. Imagine if you'd grown up with a video documentary of your great-great-grandparents. You know, never met them, unfortunately. Imagine your children hearing from them directly how they thought, how they lived, the unique experiences they would have to share, those experiences enriching the lives of generations they never got to meet. This is what you're doing for your family's benefit. We want to help you tell your story your way. Once I came to alignment, things changed. Here, they take time with you, and if there's any question, they, they answer it. That's a good place to go, because those people there care about you. They are a compassionate group. It's almost like you're coming to a second home. Welcome back. Well, with me today from the Florence Investor Senior Center, you all know Shirley Witt, and she's the program director. But also today, I'd like to welcome back a good friend of uh, us that uh, we've known for many, many years, and that's Tim Bryant with Nest Egg Investments. And the reason you're here today, Tim, and uh, you do this every year with the Senior Center, is you're involved with the Casino Night. And along with that, you often have uh, Tim as a uh, one of your seminar speakers Tim, and Tim has been with the senior center for many years yes he has you know as, as I tell people when he starts his his seminars we're friends with Tim for not not for one reason but for many reasons but when he comes and does does his seminars he's extremely trustworthy yes he is and, yeah. and that's the one thing about the senior centers we're very we're very persnickety about who we hand our seniors over to and and Tim has been very trustworthy and uh, in the financial world as we know we have to be very careful with that and he's been very very supportive of the senior he center has been, yeah. and Tim again this year is one of our sponsors for our casino night which is this Saturday night so I want to thank you Tim again for what you do for the senior center and and your help and, and how yeah you, you really do how you've been helping people for years and years well i have a special place in my heart for the center uh, as an old as the oldest child in our family i was taking care of my uh, grandmothers uh, because my parents had passed away and one lived to 100 and one was 87. wow so i've uh, always been a part of the community if you yeah. will even before i became a senior officially wow and i know that um you know, you've worked with this community uh, for a long time. As I said, you used yes. to come on our show yeah. uh, now and then and uh, as a uh, regular guest, <coughs> and you've been with the Senior Center for years. And really, as, as Shirley has said, uh, you are somebody that uh, you, are, you, can be, you can be trusted, but really, the, you know, the way you look at things in the investment world is um, it's about more about retaining what you have than exactly. trying to go exactly. for the, the big score, so to speak, right? If I yeah. can be blamed for anything, it would be maybe being a little too conservative. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we don't have time once once we are retire in our right. retirement age. Right. We don't have time to make back losses. No. Uh, we've got to protect every nickel we have. And the other thing is uh, inflation. And as you probably know, Ken, they're going to be raising interest rates again today. The Fed mm -hmm. will. Yeah. And uh, that'll be par just part of probably several more this year, one more maybe this year and next year as well. So yeah. we have to be planning for that in our conservative investments and not just trying to go out there and make the biggest bang for the buck we can. Right. And, you know, there's, there's the old saying that 
you know, to make it very simplistic, if you lose twenty-five dollars, well, you got to make you got to make back uh, almost double that to, mm -hmm. to even right. to kind of break even. That's so, right. Mm -hmm. uh, coming up, of course, is the casino night, and right. this is why Tim is here today. And this is a big event for you folks. It's a fun event. It's a fun event. It's a it's our our big fundraiser for yeah. the year. It's this Saturday night at six p.m. The tickets are twenty-five dollars. And all the proceeds go to help the Florence Sylvester and mm -hmm. its resources and programs yeah. that we put on. So it's it's a fun fun night. It's very casual. Um, we've got some great great raffle prizes, and I just invite everybody to come down. The tickets are twenty five dollars, um, and purchase a ticket and sit around. We have some good food. Tim's going to be there. <laughs> are you going to be uh, working I, the, some of the games? I, I yeah. get to be there. I'm not yeah. going to be a dealer, no. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. <laughs> no. But I get to go and, and gamble and, and do it for not costing me much money. And we, you know what's nice about this is it's a fun event, but it's a fun it, event. it raises funds. It's only $25. Of course, if you want to buy more right. raffle tickets you can buy, you, buy, or, or play spend, money or whatever play, it is. You buy more play money. Yeah. And you know, when you, for the $25, you get $100 in play money. Mm -hmm. and some people play all night long with it, or they come back and they buy some more play money and uh, raffle tickets. So it's, it's a great event. It's mm -hmm. a fun event. And the most important is that it helps the senior center. Yeah. And you know, for those of you who don't know that we are part of AGWA Senior Services, mm -hmm. a nonprofit charity, so we have to raise money to keep our doors open and this is the, one of the ways that we are, are going to do that. Yeah, and you, you get along with Tim, uh, many other great folks that are help out with this yes, as well. Yes, absolutely. I want to yeah. add one thing to what you said there. You know, a lot of the people I find that come to Casino Night are people that have either never gambled or rarely gambled. Mm -hmm they can come and they can be comfortable learning yes. the games. The dealers that they have there running the games t take their time, they're very patient, they teach people how to play and how to have fun. Yeah. And it doesn't cost them you know, a lot of money. It doesn't. No. It doesn't. It doesn't. And so. now what about you? Are you working any of the, the games? Or no, are you gonna I'm, be... I'm going to be mistress of ceremony. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Elvira. I'll be Elvira. There you go. Well, Elvira. she retired, so there you go. You can take that part <laughs> over. Now, um, you know, along with the casino night, yes. we've got the new booklet out yes. uh, for October. And again, we talk about this all the time, all the great things that um, you folks have. One of them I just uh, looked through here, Oktoberfest coming up on Friday the 12th and Gypsy Folk Ensemble and you're gonna have great a great menu here. Yes. And, We're you know, we have it's a just Halloween a lot break. of fun. We have, we have a lot of fun and we have some very good educational uh, classes also. Tim always has, a, has great classes. Um, just come by, pick up a newsletter and see what we have to offer. There's always yeah. something to offer. But the most important part is that we are a charity and I, people don't realize that not only do we offer classes and, yeah. and things like that, but we save lives. Just the other day mm -hmm. on our Meals on Wheels program, our volunteer went to serve a meal and the lady didn't answer. So she knocked and she knocked. and didn't answer so she called back to us and, and said so and so is not answering the door so we went and we got the emergency number called the emergency number it was her landlady her landlady went down and, and opened up the door for her she had been on the floor for three days oh wow and so it had not it been for the time that we were going to be delivering meals that day we may have lost this lady yeah. so those wow. things are are unsaid yeah and that's the things that we do behind the scenes all the time helping people whatever whatever their needs are so that's why we need the community support to at the end of the year it's it's time to give that you know Christmas yeah. gift keep us in the back of your mind now Tim I know um, as we said uh, you you were uh, a finance guy with a nest egg investments and you've worked with the senior center for years but you work with this community beyond that uh, right I mean I know you're you, you're still in you still do that uh, you still have your your company and help people out and Absolutely. as you said um, <coughs> uh, you know one of the main things that you know you talk about what the senior center does in many of the programs and it's all about uh, living well and and uh, you know finding finding the right people to help you out and the same thing with you you know people want to preserve what they have and 
and do the best they can, and this is where y you step in, right? And, and yes, that's true, but it even goes a little bit farther than that. Shirley always asks me every year to do a, a presentation about a life organizer, and that's basically ah. a, a, a handout that we give people yeah. that are steps to take uh, if anything happens to me whether they're alive or not alive. Mm -hmm. And so it's something that uh, that's a great, yeah, that's yeah, we a great talk point, about yeah. that and people are, are challenged to go and actually fill these things out. Yeah. And sometimes they do and sometimes they don't, but either way, somebody's right. going to benefit from Right, you get the opportunity. This. They yeah. have the chance to do Tim that. Tim yeah. always gives back to the community. He, you know, he's there, you know, that's how he makes his living, but he, he goes above and beyond and that's why we have kept him close to us. You still like us, Tim? I love you. Yeah. And you know, the guy never ages. He doesn't. How come I know. we age? I know. I, I, but yeah. he doesn't. I'm going to talk to him after, after we're off. I'm going to see what, what he's drinking. Yeah. Right. Water. A lot of water. <laughs> a lot of water. I drink a lot of water, too, but it just makes me get up at night. That's right. <laughs> but uh, again, the casino night is uh, this Saturday. Saturday. And people can just show up. You don't they need to buy tickets in advance. They can show up and buy the tickets that night, or they can stop in at yeah. the senior center and, and pick <clears> it up. So it's it's a lot of fun. It's uh, it's a fundraiser for the center. So please come out and support us. All right. Now, will you have it goes from six to ten? Are there any uh, kind of refreshments there or anything? Oh yeah, there's okay. food and refreshments, and okay. You know, we have some we we have some surprises. Some surprises. <laughs> All right. A lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, Tim, it's great to see you again. Good to it see really you. It's been a long time, but yeah. Uh, Great I hope to be you back. Come back Thank more you so often. much. We'll ask Shirley. You know, she okay. goes, "No, we only bring them on once a year." Okay. Yeah. But Thank you know, you. next time you have your um, your organizing we'll seminar, that. you know, we'll come on on. Sure. You can bring the sheet on. We can talk about that. Great. We'll do that. Okay. Yeah, that yeah. would be good. Thanks. All right. Very Thank good you. to see you. Say nice hi to, to everyone. You. I will. Good luck will. on the casino night. Thank you. Tim, always a pleasure. Thank you so much. You take care. All right. Thank you. We'll be right back. It's Desiree from Irvine Subaru, where families come first. As a family-ran dealership, your family's safety is our number one priority. Come in and find the perfect Subaru from the largest selection of Subarus in Orange County. All models are top safety picks by the Insurance Institute of Highway Safety. We offer the ideal balance of safety, performance, and economy. Irvine Subaru, more Subarus, more safety, more performance, more love. When you travel with AAA, you get more than a vacation. You get exclusive AAA member benefits, special offers on unforgettable experiences, and the travel planning knowledge of your own AAA travel agent. When you travel with AAA, you get the vacation of your dreams. To save on a pleasant holidays vacation, visit your local AAA travel agent today. Looking for a change of scenery? You don't have to play golf to enjoy all that 19 Restaurant and Lounge has to offer. From our delicious breakfast menu to our delectable lunch and dinner specials, at 19 Restaurant and Lounge, there is something for everyone. Relax with your friends and family and take in the beautiful view from our spacious patio. Or enjoy a cocktail and appetizer in our lounge. 19 Restaurant and Lounge is a great place to socialize, enjoy a meal, or simply take in the view. Join us seven days a week and experience Laguna Woods' exclusive dining experience. We all know there's no place like home. You want to stay in your own home, but day-to-day -day tasks are getting more difficult to manage. Acticare is the solution. We are the trusted care partner in your community with five-star reviews. You've taken care of others all your life. Now is the time to let us help you. In-home care is a safe and effective way to help you remain living independently in the comfort of your own home. Acticare, responsive in-home care. Your first day is free. Hiring a realtor you trust is the first step in selling your home. Selecting an escrow company that can safeguard your money and personal information throughout the transaction is the next step. Escrow Options will guarantee the safety of your personal information and funds from the risks of wire fraud and cyber theft. Choose the escrow company that works for you. Escrow Options Group, protecting consumer assets in escrow since 2005.
Welcome back. I have Tim Moy, who's here to give us our security update. And this time we're going to talk about the captain's jobs, especially when there are uh, emergencies or something going on in the community. Welcome. Oh, thank you. It's good to see you. Good to see you, yeah, too. So we're talking about our good neighbor captains. Right, the right. good neighbor captains. And so tell me a little bit about what their job is. Yeah, so it's it's they're part of the Disaster Preparedness Task Force. and. And we would love to have as many uh, volunteers step forward for that position as possible. We've got about 400 in the community. We, we, we need about 1,000. Oh, wow. In the event of some type of, a, of an emergency, and, and maybe uh, first responders are not available, uh, we need uh, our residents to take on that leadership role and, and to check on their neighbors mm -hmm. and just to report it to us. Okay. That's the, the primary responsibility is you know, we're going to ask them to don a vest, that yellow vest mm -hmm. that we give them. We provide training to them. Right. Um, and they'll just uh, go throughout the building or wherever they live, check on their neighbors, mm -hmm. and then report that information to us. Okay. So we get a grasp of, of, of what's taking place in the community, where we need to apply our resources. And then when we do, when the, the sheriff and the fire department are available mm -hmm. in the event of a major catastrophe, mm -hmm. uh, we know where to, to wreck them. And then there's some other things that we can do in, in the meantime, right. where they can go, where they can receive some first aid. So we've got a, a pretty good plan in place. Okay. We just need more volunteers to step forward. Okay, so you have 400, but you want 1,000, right? At That's least. That's what you'd like. Okay, right. so, so where is it that you're short? I mean, is it per community or what, yeah, so where are you short? It's pretty much spread throughout the okay. community. We've got some areas that, um, you know, you've got captains that can, um, uh, take care of an entire building or even a okay. cul-de-sac okay. or a neighborhood and and that's great um, but the bottom line is if you don't know who your good neighbor captain is mm -hmm. probably don't have one oh, okay right and so you can get a hold of us, us at uh, security we'll let you know we had some training yesterday right tell me um, how that went it went well uh, we had about 25 people show up you know and, and normally we get anywhere from 25 to, to 50 people mm -hmm. we've got a handout where we just we provide the directions okay this is not complicated we're not asking you to do CPR or first right. aid, although we do provide that training. Okay. But it's just a it's it's a it's a person who's willing to step forward in a leadership role right. and just check on their neighbors, make sure they're okay. And that's right. why we call it good neighbors. A good neighbor, right? Exactly. Right. Okay. So now, what? Once you are a captain or a good neighbor captain, mm -hmm. uh, what can the residents expect from that person? Right. That's that's a great question. So we, we actually give our captains a little kit here, okay. and you can see it on, on the screen behind you. Um, we're we're going to lay out their responsibilities, but the first thing they need to do is go introduce themselves. Okay. So we give them that yellow vest uh, to do wear. Do they have that yellow vest now? They do. Okay. So, uh, if, if you get a knock on your door and it's it's your neighbor and they're wearing a yellow vest, that okay. means they've stepped forward and said, "Hey, I'm going to be your your good neighbor uh, captain." Okay. And in the event of an emergency, a major incident, a power outage, an, an earthquake, a mm -hmm. major um, fire that may uh, that has threatened our community, right? You're probably going to get a knock on the door, okay. and that person in that vest is is going to check on you, maybe give you an update. Okay. Um, they're going to give directions on sheltering in place. Okay. Or potentially evacuations. Okay. Um, we're going to convert our our um, our clubhouses into right. care and in, uh, um, reception centers, so there's a place to go. Right. But the right. the primary responsibility is they're just going to check on your well-being. Okay. How are you doing? Are you injured? Okay. If there was a major earthquake, okay. um, do we need to get you out of here? Is the building unstable? Right. That type of thing. Okay. All right. Good. Good. Um, I actually want to go to the next slide if we could because I want to make sure that uh, the community actually sees right. all the different things yes. that the captains are going to be doing. So the duties of the good neighbor captain is what you just said. So they right. check on the family, they get the vest, and they have a clipboard. And what kind of forms would they have inside there? Is that just forms for them to know or forms for the residents to have? Yeah. Right, kind of both. So we're going to ask them to understand who their who their neighbors are and have that information uh, already pre-filled out. Okay. So who lives uh, right around them? Okay. Uh, hopefully, they've developed a relationship right. with them. So kind that of like they a can... kind of neighborhood watch type. Exactly. Of thing, right? Okay. right. And right. then when they go in there, and and, and depending on whether or not uh, what that person wants to share, they may say, "Hey, I've got a medical condition. Oh, we yeah. may go check on them first okay. in the event of an emergency." Right. Um, hey, I know Margaret. Um, has got a hip problem, doesn't move around well well. I'm right. going to go check on her, right. make sure she's okay. Right. Can she get out? Is she going to need assistance? Okay. That type of thing. And then our good neighbor captain is is not necessarily going to try to help her right on the scene. Mm -hmm. She's going to report that information up to our emergency operations center. How will they communicate it? Are they going to have 
like radios or right we do have come? radios at okay. the clubhouses oh okay uh, so will they have... go to the will they go to the clubhouses first and then go to the neighborhood no yeah good, great question I mean because you, you so, want to go get the radio right right so their first <laughs> job is to go check on their neighbors okay they fill out this this form that basically has boxes to check if there's any injuries okay. um, is the building damaged oh. and then they're going to take that information bring it to the clubhouse okay we have a person at the clubhouse who is then going to get it to our emergency operations center so that we're getting all this information and then we can disperse our resources out okay as all appropriate right. okay all right yeah. good yeah you know it, let's talk about the emergency operations plan because mm -hmm. i'm i'm thinking in my mind a ton of different questions sure. like what happens if we do have an earthquake and mm -hmm. some of the roads are messed up how are the people going to get mm -hmm. from their community to the clubhouse to get all the necessary stuff right. they need right so that's that's part of the emergency operations plan okay. we, we've got executives and management and supervisors who've been trained in, in a emergency management. Okay. And this plan is not something that we're just kind of put together. We're not right. shooting from the hip. This is a national right. okay. uh, standard. We followed FEMA uh, guidelines, Department of Homeland Security. We brought in a vendor. We, we put in a plan that can stand to any other plan uh, across the county. Okay. So uh, every city has to have one. Okay. And, and the city of Laguna Woods does have an emergency operations plan. So do we. Okay. And, and it's only because, hey, if first responders are not immediately, uh, immediately available, mm -hmm. we're going to have to fend for ourselves for a while. Right. Look at what's going on in the, in the Carolinas right now with right. that hurricane that came through. Yeah. And, and, you know, the devastation is so severe that uh, FEMA and the, the uh, the fire and the law, they just can't get everywhere. Right. Um, and so we shipped a thousand or so people from California. Absolutely. Didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's a, uh, and you know, m hey, our our hope in this is that if something were to happen, our first responders are available. Exactly. That it's uh, maybe it's concentrated to a certain area right. where we can pull resources. Right. Um, there there are those partnerships from mm -hmm. Orange County to LA to San Diego right. so if, if it's just concentrating on our in our area we're we're pretty confident that we'll get first okay. responders here to help us okay. if it's widespread if it's a regional issue mm -hmm. um, maybe not so much so right. we right. just want to be able to uh, educate our our residents to prepare themselves. Right. And as you know this is uh, National Preparedness Month. Right, National Preparedness Month. Mm -hmm. Right, and that means uh, that's across the nation that uh, this initiative is encouraging people to put a kit together, have a plan, right. make right. sure that you have water for several days, you have right. dry goods, uh, you've got your medication, mm -hmm. you have batteries, you right. have a flashlight, you have a radio, all those little things. And right. you can find that on, on our, our website if you go to okay. security and then disaster preparedness. Okay. I know I'm throwing a lot at you, but this is the month but where- But it's good to know. I mean, absolutely. now's the time to figure it out. And they also have those packs too that you can pick up down right. there. Um, right. In, yeah. in, I forget what the that's, what area is that. That's our disaster that's preparedness, disaster office, preparedness office. That's right, right on the first floor. Okay. Good. Next month in October, we have the Great California Shakeout, and that's another right. initiative that right. that uh, takes place across the state. Right. This time, we're going to to do a, a kind of a, a live um, um, exercise. Right. where we try to get volunteers to come in okay. to one of our clubhouses. You're going to see some email blasts go out. Okay. We're looking for volunteers for that to serve as actors. Oh. Yeah, and just to, to put our people to the test. So okay. let's say we have our, our clubhouse. We've converted it into a care and reception center. Now we want people to come in and test us. Oh, uh, hey, my building, my, there's mm -hmm. my power's out. I mm -hmm. need some place to stay. I'm mm -hmm. a minor cut mm -hmm. injury. Um, who can help me? Right. And, and that's a place you can go. So okay. we'll be looking for volunteers, but stay tuned okay. for uh, more information on that. Perfect. All right, good. So we're actually showing some some hazards. And I know that, you know, we really don't see that many hazards here, knock on wood, you know, like we have, we have earthquakes, we've right. had some fires. Uh, we haven't really had such terrible storms. I mean, maybe down by the ocean more because of the surge or something sure. coming in, but not too bad here, right? Right. Well, if you, if you look at our, our state and the, and the fires that have taken right. place and, of course, uh, the threat of earthquakes, we're, right. uh, you, know, you know, right, knock on wood knock here. On we're wood. long yeah. overdue. Yeah. Uh, we, I mean, we live on a, uh, on a fault. Um, so uh, we've, we've got to be ready for an earthquake. That, right. uh, you look at, um, I think, the North Ridge uh, several right. years ago. Yeah. Um, and I know there were some slides on some on fires, uh, the Laguna right, the fire. the 93 fire. 93, right. and mm -hmm. if you look at that map, you could see that um, it, it just came just short of Laguna Woods. Right. 
Oh so. my gosh. I so a lot of different types one. of threats. Yeah. You see obviously the, the earthquake, right. the one on the, the lower right there is that north, north region. Oh, yeah. You can see the, yeah. the, the type <laughs> of destruction, a major shake. Well, and some of our buildings are older. I mean, hopefully they've been retrofitted, some of them, to, to help with that, but right. not all of them. Right. And so we're going to, you know, if in the event of a, a major earthquake, we're going to have to get out there with our engineers and, and to assess right. the damage. Right. If a building looks uh, uninhabitable, we've got to move our people out. Where can they go? Right. Uh, we'll be working with our emergency operations center for the county. Right. There, there's a lot of things here. Mm -hmm. uh, I want our residents to know we have a plan right we know right. what we're doing we have partnerships with the county with the city right. um, the, again it's it, and you have to because of the the area we live in right we're not trying to scare anybody of we're just trying not. them to be prepared I mean it is a scary thing but right. you know you guys are following what what we call we're, the incident command right ICS right ICS yes. okay incident and that's national system. right it is and okay. that's part of NIMS national incident management system okay. so we all follow that um, I was trained on it through the sheriff's department okay. all our personnel and security uh, supervisors have been trained on all incident right. command and there's there's a process of how you respond to okay. emergencies so again, we're not doing it differently than the sheriff or the fire. Right. We're all working together. We're using the same terms. We're the same verbiage, uh, the same protocols, the same positions. Right. We have an operations, a logistics, a uh, planning, a finance chief, as okay. do every other uh, um, ICS okay. as well. Well, good. Well, good thing yeah. you're here. <laughs> I yeah. mean, it's good to have. I mean, I think we're right. in really good hands. So if somebody was interested in becoming a good neighbor captain, or if they just had questions about some of the stuff that we've talked about, uh, who should they call? Right. Give us a call at security. And, okay. And that's 580-1400. Uh, okay. Perfect. We will then uh, get in contact with you. Okay. And if you want to be a, a good neighbor captain, we'd love to have you. If you just want to know, do I even have one? Oh, yeah. in my neighborhood okay. give us a call okay and you'll have all the list of we'll, we have okay. the, the database we're looking for more although again we had training yesterday there will be additional training okay. and we can do you know one-on-one uh, -on -one training as well if you're interested okay. in uh, stepping forward come on in we'll get you that packet okay. and we'll set you up we need about we need about 600 more <laughs> at least at so least. hopefully we'll get that all yeah, right well thank good. you for the information Got it. thank good you good to have you and uh, you can get your information uh, from the security department to be a good neighbor captain. So step up and participate. We'll be right back after this. Hey Laguna Woods, it's Ken. And Lisa. Did you miss an episode of this day? Not to worry, head over to youtube.com and search Village Television. Here you can find each episode of this day and other community programs such as Good Day OC, Discovering Laguna Woods, and much more. Just click the red subscribe button, then click the bell to be emailed every time we upload a video. Don't miss out. And subscribe today. I started Sterling Financial under the premise that there was a need for integrity in this industry as well as quality service. There's such volatility in the stock market. They, you know, one day it could be up 100 points, the next day it could be down 500 points. Well, what we like to do is be able to have people go to bed and wake up the next morning knowing that their money is safe and secure. That's what we try to do here at Sterling Financial Advisors is to create peace of mind and quality of life in retirement. I'm Dr. Leif Loberg, and I want to welcome you to our brand new facility here in Laguna Woods. We've been serving the community since 2006, and we're super excited to bring you an awesome team of doctors, Dr. Jackson, Dr. Ossetorians, Dr. Vian, and myself, uh, here to serve you in our brand new state-of-the-art facility. Call us in the morning, and we'll get you in the same day, guaranteed. Laguna Hills Lodge is very proud to have been awarded the TripAdvisor Award of Excellence for the last five years. Discover this family-friendly boutique hotel and enjoy our crystal clear pool and spa, beautiful gardens and convenient location. Our designer upgraded rooms feature luxury comforts of much higher priced hotel chains and include free continental breakfast, parking, Wi-Fi and more. We match the lowest price you can find online. Ask about our Laguna Woods special offer.
Welcome back. Well, with me today from the Thrive Project is Mark Rabinovich. And Mark is, of course, not only on our Trading Post show, but he is a stellar photographer. Oh, and we're going to show some of the photos that you took. But the reason you know, you're here today is you help out a lot yeah. at uh, the different events. And yeah. these, uh, uh, the Thrive Project is really all about showing people, uh, showing folks what goes on here in the village yeah. and how people who live here are making the most of, of their life and remaining active and getting involved in things and right. really just having fun. And how people who aren't necessarily getting up off the couch yeah. Yeah. can do so. Yeah. And it's painless <laughs> and fun. Yeah, it is. Um, that's kind of how I got started. Uh, here in the village, you know, it started with my camera, started at the camera club, and that worked its way into a job, working with a non-paying job, working with Heather, who yeah. used to be here downstairs, photographing for for her, and it led from one thing to the next, and yeah, you know, I could go on and on, but people, many people know the story, and and I won't take their time up now, but. Got to get up off the couch. Yeah, you do, yeah. and you're a perfect example of that. You know, and I uh, you know, I, I got to mention before we go on that it turns out that Mark grew <laughs> up um, yeah. very near where uh, yeah. my dad and, and stepmom lived up in Daly City in the yeah. Bay Area. So it's kind of neat. I, I could have yeah. been a, a little kid walking past your house. Um, I, I we, know I was. We walk, I, I re, well, we won't we go into it today, but, there, but yeah, anyway. it just, yeah. <laughs> you folks don't have any idea how close the houses were. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's take a look at some of the photographs sure. you have here. And uh, tell us about each one. How do you pick these folks out? And, I, uh, I don't know if you have a, if you, have the names of each one of them. If not, that's fine. But I I'm don't just... have this lady's name, uh, but I can uh, tell you this photograph was taken at the 90s plus, recent 90s plus okay. luncheon this year. All right. She is 105. Wow. Yes. That's amazing. Yes. Uh, I took photographs of five or six, uh, they happened to all be ladies, who were all over 100. Wow. Talk about thriving. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah, 105. And yeah, I wouldn't. wouldn't it be I fun? certainly wouldn't guess her at that age no. at all. No. That's wow. That's incredible. Yeah. Uh, but that's a good example. But that's a perfect yeah. example. And and she was light and lively and happy to be there wow. and didn't seem like a couch sitter. Yeah, not at all. Yeah. And you know, here again, here are people that you know, golf is a lifelong sport. And uh, this is something that, of course, we here he in the village offer. Oh, uh, major, uh, yeah, major here. Yeah, and uh, it's something that, it, you know, it doesn't matter what your what your ability is in any certain sport. It's yeah. just to go out at this point. Do it. Do it. You're not really competing to win so much as just right. to have fun and competing with yourself. Exactly. Yeah. You're in a foursome. Compete within the foursome. Yeah. Have a coffee bet. Yeah. I'll bet you a donut that I can do better yeah. than you. This was a class. That photograph yeah. of the golf was a class. Uh, pe pe people how to golf. Yeah. The, the swimming, it's the same thing. This is an emeritus uh, photograph I took uh, earlier in the year. It's simply a class on exercising yeah. in the water. Yeah, look how, it, but again, Here's something that's low impact, so yeah. maybe you know you got a little bit of arthritis going on, or what it might yeah. be. You get into the pool, you're being active, yes, and having fun. And if you could see behind many of the hats, some of those folks are older than me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's all the village. Yeah, yeah. the village. You you deal with it all the time. Yeah, it's great. Now let's look at the next photograph here, and this is something that is. So huge here, and you know, unique really yes. is having these stables, yep. and and people do have some of their own horses here, but there are also I don't know, maybe twenty twenty five horses uh, I think uh, whatever the amount is that the village that yeah. the village oversees. Right. So people can learn to ride. Exactly, they can go over here and learn about horses. That's and, right. 
and they have uh, different yep. levels and heights of the horses. And it, I mean, it's wonderful. All kinds of things you could yeah. do. This lady, I just took this photograph a couple of days ago. Uh, Sassy is the name of the horse. Yeah. Uh, this lady is a volunteer at the stables. And I yeah. don't know her age, but there you go. There you I mean, go. it's a perfect example. Up off the couch, out of the house, doing something she loves. Yeah. You want to thrive? This is the way to do it. You want to learn something new it. between all the different events we have here, the emeritus classes. I mean, yeah. it's endless. Yep. Now, really what we're looking at here is, uh, you know, well, obviously a couple gentlemen and having a good time, having a little wine. Yep. But the point is, we got great artists here. Yes. Or maybe there are people who always thought, I want to learn to paint or yes. draw or whatever, or ceramics. That's all offered here. It's certainly yeah. offered here. This was taken again earlier this year here in the building. Uh, we had, a, 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 I forget what it was called, a special night for yeah. the artist, the yeah. art that was put up. And there was wine and cheese and, and people walked around. And I happened to catch these two guys standing there admiring that photograph. Yeah. And well, let's worked. look at the last one here because we're just about out of time for okay. the show. We know these folks. Uh, uh, you know, it just reminds you that if you want to get involved in entertainment here, yep. the th uh, we, ha we have the Theater Guild, we have the Old Pros, we yep. have all different uh, musical groups that yep. get together exactly, and have a good time. That's why you yeah. have me on this morning. That's why. Folks, if you get up off the couch and go do something, you're going to have a good time. You are. Yeah. And this is a perfect example of it. Yeah. All right. Mark, always good to see you. Good to see you, Ken. All right. And thank you. Yeah. And of course, you can uh, watch Mark uh, most Wednesdays on the Trading Post. And yeah. he's always around with his camera. So yeah, smile yes. <laughs> for him. Yeah. All right. Hey, you know what? We're just, uh, we're, our, our show is over. And again, I'm going to warm up for the next couple days a little bit, then going back down again. and. Uh, it's kind of nice, this fall weather. I hope it sticks around. I do too. All right. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.